Okay, can I, can I ask what a few people do here? Can, can, if you, someone from your table, what, do you, what does someone do? Occupational therapist, brilliant. Someone here? A, a what site developer? Okay. Insurance broker, brilliant. Civil servant. An IT consultant. And you? <laughs> You're a church leader, right? So Tim's got the most holy job, hasn't he? he come on. Because Tim's, you know, very clearly advancing the work of God. That's how I always used to think of it anyway, that, you know, you've got kind of people who work in like, people like IT consultants here. But Tim's job, that's, you know, that's clearly. I don't think God thinks of it like that. Was anyone here on Sunday? Yeah, a few people. So Tim was talking about uh, this kind of really unhelpful divide that we, we think of, the, the secular and the sacred that, you know, we, we separate things out, that, you know, part of the week is sacred, the, the Sunday morning and maybe, you know, Wednesday night, and, uh, but, you know, the rest is kind of secular, and when you're in your, in your job, you know, your IT consultant to the computer, sorry, I'm picking on you, but, uh, you know, then it's, that's, that's kind of the less holy bit of the week. Uh, and similarly with jobs, we think of, you know, some being really holy and some being kind of not so much. Uh, and, and it's really not how God thinks of things. God thinks of things... As a whole, and so if you are in a job of, uh, you know, an occupational therapist, you're on the, the front line. You're on the front line of being uh, the person who can. Sorry, I'm making a bit of a noise. So the person who can have a difference. Start the sentence again. Yeah, so you can be on the front line of someone who makes a difference. Uh, so you talk about Jesus talks about it as being uh, salt and light. Uh, so you know, being the light in the darkness. Uh, let me just sort this. Uh, there's, a, there's a passage in Matthew, uh, Matthew 5. It says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill can't be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The whole point of a light is to shine in the darkness. You don't need a light when it's already light, do you? You need it to be in a dark place. Uh, so that's why I think it's so exciting uh, when you hear people who work in a, a job, maybe when there's no Christians around or that doesn't seem very holy at all. Maybe God has placed you there uh, to have an influence, to have an influence uh, and, and be in that situation where there's no one else. There's no one, no one where there's... Okay, can you hear me now? Any, any interruptions? So what do we do? What do we do if we're trying to shine out? If we want to be that light in the darkness, what kind of things practically does it mean for us day to day? Um, maybe being open about your faith is a start. Uh, but I wanted to think about things that we uh, actually do. You know, in Matthew 7, it talks about you'll know them by their fruits. You know, and by what actually comes out at the end of it. Uh, which I think is a little bit similar to the parable of the, the Good Samaritan, isn't it? You know, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, the Samaritans at that time were the, the enemy. They were the, the ones the Jews hated. Uh, so it's quite a controversial parable, and it was talking about um, how this guy had you know, been beaten up and left, uh, beaten up by these robbers and left for dead. Uh, and the most holy people around, the, a priest and a Levite, they, they walked past. And then... This, this Samaritan, this really controversial, this person that they hated was the one who stepped in. And uh, what would the equivalent be today? It would be like a, a church leader and an aid worker walked past and some kind of, um, you know, fundamentalist, uh, some, you know, from a terrorist group or something would help out. It would be really controversial. So uh, it's this idea that, that labels... It's not about the label that you give yourself. It's about the fruit that comes out at the end of it. Uh, and that is a great opportunity for us. When, when James says uh, faith without works is dead, uh, what, what really is the, the opportunity for us is the works, isn't it? How we actually live things out. Uh, and, and that is in our work. I was asking what people do. Does anyone have, um, is anyone a full-time parent or between jobs or... Uh, not in a straightforward kind of office job at the moment. And there may be a few people. Yeah, and uh, this is for everyone. So 
everyone interacts with people in the day, right? So it may be uh, with parents at the school gate, it may be that you're seeing the same people each day, it may be that you run your own business and you have uh, the same clients. Uh, not everyone's situation is the same, uh, but we all have this opportunity to, to make that difference in the people we do interact with. Um, and uh, sometimes it's, it's the actual action that we take, the, the, the kind of the way we are that draws people in more than what we say. So uh, I had it once where I work in, a, in journalism, very stressful environments sometimes in a newsroom uh, and tempers can really flare. And someone said to me once that, um, I said, Paul, you're always really calm when it's really stressful. What do you do? Do you meditate? I, I'd never said anything to him about my faith at all. And so I said, well, no, I, I don't, but I'm a Christian. And so and he said, wow, does that help? So I was able to talk to him about it. Another time, um, I was at a, uh, someone's leaving do, and they said to me, um, Paul, you've been so great to work with. And I just wanted to tell you that uh, there was something different about you. And uh, I couldn't, uh, it was just something great. And I asked around you, I asked other people about you. And they, someone told me, you're a Christian. And then it all made sense. It all made sense. Because uh, people notice how we act, how we actually are. Um, and maybe you'll be in situations where there's, uh, there's a kind of place of darkness. Maybe it's, there's gossip going on. Maybe it's, uh, there's, there's tempers fraying at work. Maybe you have uh, ethical decisions to make. Maybe it can be uh, problems with how people are treated. Uh, maybe it's more subtle than that. Maybe it's, um, you know, people kind of, some people get ignored. Uh, there's always uh, some things where we can actually make a difference. Um, and uh, it can be sometimes quite hard to stand up, can't it? When the culture of a place is a certain way, it can feel quite difficult uh, that you could make a difference. And how many people are we here? Maybe a couple of dozen and then people watching the video. And how can we, as a, a relatively small group of people, actually influence a great bit of the world outside there? Millions of people in London. I want to show you two of uh, my favorite psychology experiments that will give you a bit of hope. Uh, the first one was um, this, this psychology experiment done in the 70s. And, uh, and there's this man who got a, uh, a group of people in a room, uh, participants, and put them in a big line. So you'd say a line of people all the way from Alex all the way to Jonathan at the end here. Uh, and they'd show them uh, lines like this. So they would uh, have some lines. and. Uh, and they would ask them, uh, which line uh, is the same as line X, which is the same length? And yeah, unless you need glasses or something, this is pretty easy, right? Um, except all of the participants were fake except for one, the one at the end of the row. And so a lot of the time they'd get it right. But then sometimes you'd ask them the question and they'd say, A. And, and so the person at the end of the row would be thinking, what? That guy's nuts. He's got it all wrong. Then the next person would say, A. Then the next person would say A, and it would go all the way along the row until it got to the last person. And you know what they did? About three quarters of the time, they would sometimes cave in and just say A. Because it's so hard to stand up to pressure and conformity. Is, and these are normal people like you and me. They're just normal people, and it's so hard to stand up. But this psychologist did a variation of this study, and he uh, put in... Uh, in one of these variations, he put in the middle of the row, somewhere in the row, he put in someone who would say the right answer. So it would go A, 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 and then someone would say B. And then it would go all the way down, A, 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 until you got to the last person again, and they would say B. And it just took one person to say the right answer, and then the person would always get it right. Always get it right because they just needed to have one ally. Uh, and that is a great message of being salt and light. You know, when Jesus talks about being salt and light and being the yeast in the dough, uh, the same message across all three, isn't it? That the little thing can make a big difference. A little bit of salt in the, in the food can make a big difference. A little bit of yeast can make the bread rise. A little bit of light can have a, a great effect in the darkness. And sometimes you might not even see the effect. There's another great experiment which I love, which is um, they, there's another group of participants in a room. 
and uh, this, uh, the psychologist told them, uh, I want you to work out, uh, pretend you're a company, and you're working out compensation payments for uh, people who have uh, been injured. And uh, so they, uh, you know, they do some of these uh, things on their own, on a piece of paper, and say, oh, in this one I think that person deserves uh, 50,000 pounds, and, and, and then some of them, they're doing a group. And so they'd ask uh, the group, so you, you've got to decide now between you uh, what the compensation payment should be. And one of the people in the group was a fake. He was in on the experiment. And he would always argue a really stingy amount, really, really low. Uh, and the group would disagree. And they would say, you're wrong. And there was a big debate about it. And they'd, they would stick with what they believed was right. And that's the final decision they'd make. But then later on, when they're filling in the studies on their own, these anonymous things on paper, uh, when it's a private view, the people who had experienced that person tended to go lower. And so the message is that you might not realize the effect you're having, but you do have one. So even if you don't see it, people don't change their view publicly, they may do privately. Isn't that encouraging? That we as Christians can stand out, we can be uh, just one person to make a difference, even if you don't see it. You might still, you probably are still making a difference. So in your work, in your office, in your classroom, in your, with your clients or with your peer group, uh, you can be that light. You can be that person that makes a difference, that light in the darkness. So I just wanted to think about three questions, the three questions I've got. The first one is this. Uh, what situations has God placed you in where you can make a difference? So particularly dark situations, difficult situations, what are the most awkward ones, the, the ethically challenging ones, or the, the ones where there just seems to be not a lot of hope or really negative culture? What kind of situations God placed you in where you can make a difference there? What words might people use to describe you at work? Uh, what, do you, what kind of, how do you come across? Uh, how would they think of you? Uh, what kind of uh, thing are you conveying? And then third, if you could change one thing about your workplace culture, what would it be? Uh, what are we aiming for? What are we trying to change? Then we've got such a great opportunity. All right, great, thanks.